seven three and a half. All right, no, back to you. Right there. Okay, bring me the level. That's fine. Let's see. All right. Let's see what this one looks like. Hey everyone, welcome back to the outpost. Patrick came up today to help me start on the chicken pen. Um, we've got 30 days to get it done before um, they have the farmer's market, which actually, they probably had it today, um, but I wasn't anywhere near ready to get the chickens. So in the next four weeks, I should have this pen done and we will be ready for some chickens up here at the outpost. Anyway, if you're new to this channel, be sure to check our website for details on our not only our monthly giveaways on the Outpost channel, but we also have one uh, that's called Outpost Review. Be sure and check that channel because we do giveaways on both, and we've also started new milestone giveaways. So be sure and check the website for all the details on that because we're really excited about the really nice prizes that we're giving away. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to get out the water level. We're going to put a mark on each one of those, cut them off with a chainsaw, and then we will be ready to start setting our tiers that we're going to build uh, on top, getting ready to put the wire on. So, hope you guys sit back, stay tuned, and enjoy the video. Yeah, it's still good right there. Down a little bit. Down a little bit more. Keep going down. Still have it down. Still have to go down just a little bit. Right there is perfect. Right there? Yep.
way first. Where did you come up with that? I made myself some bacon and eggs this morning to get started. I've got planned to go in there and work on the cabin. I'm trying to get um, one of the bedrooms complete so that I can go ahead and finish moving in here and be up here full time. Well, I'll tell you what, there's just something about cooking over the fire that you just can't beat. It makes everything else taste better. I love coming out here cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner over the fire and so looking forward to being out here full time, being able to do that. Well, I will get this ate up and then I will meet you in there in the cabin.
since my rafters are actually um, a combination of my roof and my ceiling, um, I was trying to decide whether I was going to go vented or unvented. Um, with an unvented system, you're going to have to have pretty much complete closure, and that would require me uh, spraying that so that it would be completely sealed. Um, there are a lot of advantages with going uh, with an unvented system, but that's quite a bit of an extra expense too, and I'm not going to go, go through that expense to uh, spray all of that and seal it all up. So what I have decided to do is to use this is, uh, I'm not sure if you call it a louver or it's basically just styrofoam. And what it does is it goes up against the uh, bottom side of your roofing material, which I used OSB in this uh, situation. Um, but it goes right up underneath the bottom and you staple it. And this is what it looks like. So these little cones kind of give it support up against the bottom and you just basically staple this in the air hot air if it gets trapped in the ceiling uh, between the ceiling and the roof it's able to flow like this all the way up to the portion where the peak is and what i'm going to have to do is i'll have to take the ridge cap off because we put that on there you know to kind of keep the inside dry so what i'll do is i'll just pop the ridge cap off and i'll take my skill saw and i'll go and i'll cut just a small gap in the crown or the ridge of the roof and then I'll put the ridge cap back on but that will allow any uh, hot air to be able to escape that collects. Now one thing that I did do when I chose the material to go or the metal to go on top of the roof I chose the lightest color that they had which is uh, what they call desert sand and even in the summertime uh, you can still touch the metal it doesn't get hot. You remember the other Chevy truck that I had was kind of a charcoal gray. I'll tell you what, in the summertime, if you touch that, you could just almost fry an egg on it. Uh, but the truck that I have now, the Silverado that I have now, is white, and you can actually lay your hand on it in the middle of the summer, and it's not that hot. So this roof is not going to collect a whole lot of heat. Now, there will be radiant heat that does come through it, but like I say, I tried to choose the lightest color so that the collection of the heat would be uh, as minimal as possible. Um, but the other thing that happened was we used um, two by sixes to tie in right up above my purlins right here uh, to keep the two by sixes, you know, from from bowing and just to give it more um, a base of structure. So let me take you up here and show you what I did to that. I apologize for um, the darkness today because we're having a lot of thunderstorms. But if you can see the holes that I cut on each side right here, this is the blocking material that I've got between the ceiling joists. And then of course I got my purlin right below it. So by putting the vent in here on the bottom side, this would actually stop the airflow. So I drilled a couple of holes and then what those are for, when I put my venting in up here, you can see that that will allow the air to be able to escape from one side to the other when I actually put this up here. Otherwise, the air would be trapped. It got dark really quick. There's a lot of thunder. Yesterday was really funny because, um, you know, I got uh, smoky actually in December. And uh, he's just now right at about six months old. And the funny thing was, is yesterday, I think, was the first time for him to actually hear thunder. And I was walking out of the house, and he, of course, he jumped down the steps and went around the corner. And there was, a, I had seen the lightning, you know. Of course, it takes it just a few seconds to get, you know, the sound to get to you. I had seen it. And then as soon as that happened, I turned around, here it comes. I turned around and looked and that thunder hit and he took off across the driveway. He didn't know what was going on.
other thing that I did yesterday was I actually ran this tail. I went around, up through um, the outside beam, and then back up through the ceiling joist and over and about center ways of the pearl, and I actually drilled a one inch hole up through there and brought that leg down for a ceiling fan before I get all that closed up and forget about it because then I would have had to have tacked it along the side of the purlin up there and then covered it up with something which would have not looked good at all. But I've got to remember to do those and I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and cut those holes in these purlins on the five sections that I intend to mount ceiling fans so that it will remind me that um, that uh, is going to actually get the ceiling fan and I won't forget any of the wiring. I should probably go ahead and run the wiring for that too. But um, yeah, I got over to that yesterday and realized that I hadn't put that wire in yet for the ceiling fan. And so I went ahead and did that before uh, I come on across because my intention is, is just to come past this bedroom wall right here where I can go ahead and put the ceiling material and get everything closed in because I'm going to stay in this bedroom and then finish the rest of the house at my leisure. So um, that, that was almost left out. That's an important thing to remember. But uh, I do have that tail coming down here and I do need to change this switch out to a three-way because this one switch right here will turn my sconce lights on in the bedroom and it will also turn the light on in the closet and then I'll have the other one to be able to operate, turn the fan on and off. I'm not going to have the uh, ceiling fans with lights, just the fan only because I'm going to have sconces on the wall. My son is going to make those lights up for me. So anyway, I did get that done and um, it's going to look a whole lot better than having that wire run on the outside.
Well, I know that there's probably some people that have been following the channel wondering why he didn't put that radiant barrier in there. Well, I decided, you know, since there's not really going to be a dead space on either side of it, because um, I actually, when I did the roof, I didn't really know about it at the time or um, realized that that was what was available. So, um, since it's going to be touching either the upper side or the lower side, I decided to go ahead and wait and until I got the insulation on, then I'm going to go across and put it on before I put the um, ceiling material on because otherwise I would have to cut each piece individually, uh, split it down the middle and put it in there and that's just going to be a whole lot of work for nothing when I can actually cut a long strip and just tack it right on the bottom because like I said, Either way I do it, it's not going to have a dead air space on either side of it. But since I have it, um, it will help somewhat, but that's not the correct way to install it. But like I said, when we did the roof, we really didn't know about that material at the time. So, since I've already got it, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Well guys, I spent the last part of the day actually straightening up around this kitchen over here and moving everything around because um, I really need to get everything moved over in that spare bedroom because as I got to looking at it, I'm going to have to at least finish the insulation on the upper portion or the peak portion of the front side of the house because when I said I intended to do the uh, closet too, um, half of that is covered by this section of the roof. So I'll have to be able to put the wall in and put the ceiling on at least the upper portion, like I said, so that once that's done, um, I can actually put the, the little bitty ceiling on the uh, walk-in closet and I can put things in there and I don't have to worry about stuff falling on it and getting all dusty and everything like that. So that's what I did, um, cleaning up this section right here. So I'll show you. This way I can um, at least finish, like I said, this half of the roof on the front side and have everything over here out of the way. I'll have to move, I have a few tables on the inside of the closet, I'll have to move those, but that's not a big deal. Getting all this straightened up and getting it swept up was uh, the big thing. I'll probably reserve the kitchen uh, for last because I do have that outdoor kitchen out there. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish um, the inside here, honestly, um, if I just had the insulation on the inside here, if I had the wiring in, had my solar and my water uh, hooked up, and then had my doors on, I could actually stay in here, um, you know, and not have to even through the winter time. But I don't intend for it to go that long. But I don't know how long it's going to take to finish it. But um, I am 
um, pecking away at it so alternating other projects and coming in here like when it's raining and then maybe spending an extra day in here you know uh, outside of some of the other stuff that I'm doing I can uh, get it done by fall but uh, anyway we certainly appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out with us my son my daughter and I we can't thank you enough we hope that everyone has a good day take care and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time